You know, I wanted to do this video just because I think it would be good to help out the new people starting junk removal. I think the realization that getting in this business sometimes can be easy, but then if you don't have the right person kind of leading you, it can be a difficult path to take. And this past week, I did a ride along. So Orson Kaznowski or Kaziski, he asked me if he could ride along. And I told him, sure, if you want to ride along, come with me today. I'm, I'm booked up. So this past week, and I want to get everything right. I want to be sure that all my numbers and everything's right. So on the 18th, which was the busiest day that I had this past week, I had, I uh, think, a little over nine jobs on the schedule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight jobs on the schedule. And out of those eight jobs, I actually passed off four of them uh, to other people. So there was eight plus uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I had 13 jobs on Monday. And I passed off two jobs to Clinton Ritter. I passed off uh, another job to Orson. And then I passed off a job to my son. So that was the, the four jobs that I did that I didn't do, but I had them scheduled. And the reason I tell you that is because the job that I passed off to Orson was only a fridge. And then he contacted me. He took a picture of it and he said, Ricardo, I'm done. Here it is. Uh, and I was, I was just thinking to myself, uh, you don't have to send me a picture. I don't really care if, if the fridge gets, you know picked up and you show me proof of it. I mean, pick it up, but don't show me proof of it. It doesn't matter. It's just a fridge pickup. And I guess he asked me that day if he didn't mind, if I didn't mind him coming to pick, I mean, working with me that day. And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's go do this. Uh, the next day, I'm sorry. And he did. So the whole rest of the week, he helped me out. So that was Monday. And then Tuesday, he helped me out. I had already completed uh, three jobs, and then we went and do this hot tub for, together, me and him, and it was a beating. The hot tub was a complete beating, but I just want to let you know that on Monday, that now we're talking about Tuesday, but Monday, we I did three hot tubs, three hot tubs in one day. I did two with Carlos, and then one with uh, Fred, from who just came to the Junk Removal Summit, uh, and then Orson came to work with me on Tuesday for the first hot tub removal. And I'm going to tell you, there was a big old difference in how this works. And I was talking to my wife about this last night, about the how I handle my customers and how Orson will handle his customs, customers. So let's get into it. Orson is starting a new junk removal service called DFW, DFW Clutter Busters. He's actually not sure of his name yet, but I think that's what we're calling him so far. I mean, that's what he's calling himself so far. DFW Clutter Busters. And he came to the Junk Removal Summit this past, uh, in the past two weeks that I had it two weekends ago. And he was very knowledgeable. I mean, he really listened. He really listened, right? That's one thing I caught about him, that he listened a lot. He took notes. And he immediately started building a website, but he was there to learn. Not only was he there to learn, but he was there to ask questions, and he did. He asked a lot of questions. He asked a lot of questions. Then after I contacted him on Monday about the fridge to pick up, he contacted me on Tuesday, and he said, can I come to work with you? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I need someone Tuesday because my guy just bailed out on me. So what happened was uh, the person who I contracted to work didn't want to work with me. And then I'm, 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 I just got to that point where I got frustrated. I got to that frustration point. I asked him, could you help me out with these hot tubs? He bailed on me at the last minute. And I said, that's it. I'm not using this guy no more. I help him a lot. He helps me a lot, but I'm done. I can find someone else. And I found Orson. And thank God I found Orson because uh, he has been a blessing to my business. I'm going to tell you that whenever I need help, I just contact this guy. This guy, oh, my God. Let, let me express what happened. So whenever I do a hot tub, I charge uh, $300, and then I give 150 to him, and I keep another 150 If it's a ride-along, I will not pay you anything. You're just riding along. You're learning from me, and that's all that happens. Orson, I decided to use Orson. I told him we had a, a hot tub removal. And that was it. Just come and help me. I had already made, I think that day, I'll be honest with you, on Tuesday, 
Monday was my busiest day. I made $1,500 on Monday, but then Tuesday, I only made $800, and Orson only came to help me with my hot tub removal, and we knocked that out. Then I told him again, hey, Orson, I have a big job. I have a hoarder, I mean, a bed bug job, and then I have a hot tub removal job. Come and help me again. This is going to be my fifth hot tub of the week. He came, helped me out. I made that day, I made $1,150. And I did something else, I don't remember. Every day this week, he helped me out. And he's working with me, and I'm paying him half of everything that I do. On the jobs that I could do by myself, I would do them, but I would pay him just as an employee, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever it took, whatever it took. For instance, the bed bug removal job, I gave him $100 because I made 1000 Now, while we're doing these jobs, I am noticing one thing. I'm noticing a communication difference between me and Orson with our customers. The way I talk to my customers and the way he talks to my customers or just customers overall. I just want to make that clear. There's a big old miscommunication there. There is a customer service that he does and a customer service that is warranted to the customer. Guys, I'm not saying I'm ever any better to the customer than he is. The thing is, when I look at junk removal, I look, and I've been doing this for 16 years. I'm a complete salesman and businessman during the whole procedure. I do customer service, but I get the job done and then I leave. And this was something different that I saw Orson doing. Orson really, really presses hard for the customer. Customer service is important to him. The way you talk to the customer, the way you treat the customer, everything about the customer is pressed hard with Car or Orson. With me, it's not. And I noticed that cycle as every customer, as we progress on every customer, and it was weird to me because I'm going, he, he's doing too much. You could do way too much, and then you could do just the minimal. I, de, I do exactly what is required to get the customer. Orson was also telling me that he used to be a car salesman or work at a car dealership. The salesmanship of a car dealer and the salesmanship of the junk rebel is totally two different things. And I don't know how to explain it. I was trying to explain it to my wife last night over dinner. But the communication that he has with his customers and the com communication that I have with my customers are totally different. The things, how he runs his business and the things that I run my business, I'm trying to mold him into doing the right things in junk removal. Not that I know much, but 16 years is pretty good for it. And establishing that communication and that wavelength between us was a challenge. It was a challenge. Sometimes I tell him, Orson, no, let's do this. Let's do this. We do it this way. Take your time. And I'm going to tell you something about Orson. He is one of the hardest workers I've ever seen in my life, dude. This guy just books and he hustles. Okay, of course, there's some things about Orson that, that you need to know. He doesn't have a wife and he doesn't have a girlfriend. So his opening to anything that he does is very very easy. He doesn't have to come home to anybody. He doesn't have to answer anybody. It's him and only him, his apartment, his dog and cat. You know, he was talking to one of my customers and I remember talking to one of the customers and he said, hey, so how are you doing today, ma'am? How's it going? And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 dude, let's, let's not do all that. Let's not do all that. Let's just get the job done and get out of here. The customer wanted their piano removal, and the communication between Orson and the customer were like really, really friendly, really friendly, and I'm thinking, no, let's get out of here. You could tell. I can read a person and know if a person wants to be talked to. I can read a person and know if the person just wants to be left alone. And that was some of the situations that we got into. And I wouldn't really say anything to Orson. I would just let him communicate and get it over with, but I was thinking in my head, man, okay, I can see what's going on here. And maybe some of the times he was wasting too much, he was talking too much. And maybe at times he wasn't talking too much. But I will tell you this. 
I am trying to teach him how to talk, how to communicate, and what needs to be done to get the job done, to get it completed. It was a surprise to me to see this. And Orson had this number. So I, this week, I, I think, I'm just going to go on and say a number that I think is in my head. So out of the six days that we worked, out of the six days that we worked, I made $1,000 four times. The last two days, <coughs> the last, the other two days that I didn't, that I worked but didn't make a lot of money, I made 800 and another day I made like 450 or 420 or, so, or something really, 260, 260, that's what the number was. Yesterday, me and him worked together. We made $1,145, and then I gave him two jobs, a $400 job and a $45 job for him to take because he helped me out so much, and I paid him. Orson went to do those jobs. I got home at 330 Got dressed, went out to dinner and a movie with my wife. By the way, don't watch Ghostbusters. It was horrible. And he had a quota. He had a quota that he had to. He wanted to meet. He wanted to make money this week, and he wanted to uh, to make profit. And he sent me what he made this week. So I want to read this with you, okay? I want to read it with you. Uh, I pulled it up just a second ago, and where the hell is it now? Oh, my God. I'm the worst. Oh, here it is. So by himself on, on Monday, which the day he did not work with me, he made $220. So he started his day like that. He started to, and he writes out, I'm looking at the spreadsheet that he has here and he wrote down his expenses were $75. And then he worked with me Tuesday. He made $430 with me. He worked with me Wednesday. He made $400. Thursday, he made 217 and I think that was the day it was slow. And then Friday, he made 410 And then Saturday, he made, which was yesterday, $970. And then today, he's working today, and he's estimated to make $645. So here's the thing about it. His gross sales for the whole week, the gross sales is $3,292. Total expenses, and now this is his spreadsheet that I'm, I'm reading, is $681, $681. Now, his total profit is totally, I want to pull this up really fast to show you what it looks like, but that's, that's not it. I have to pull this up. Uh, window display, window capture. I'll just do that, and then I'll pull up his sheet right here. Oh, there it is. So this is what it looks like. Oops. Is it locked? No. Oh, there it is. So this is what a sheet looks like right here. I'll I guess I'll put it right up here. Well, I'll put it up here. Um, well, I got to make this really small for it to fit. Oh my gosh. Look how small I got to make it. So this is his spreadsheet right here. Now I'll, I'll cover my face. I don't care. This is a spreadsheet that he made. Uh, this is all that he took in. I'm going to separate this and make this smaller. That's what I'm going to do right here. And come back to this. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh man, where am I at here? Oops. Let me make it this. Oh, here it is. Sorry, guys. Mm, okay, there it is. All right, that's better. So here's his total uh now he told me that if he want a, if he averaged uh, 1800 dollars a week uh he'd be happy 1800 dollars a week and if you could tell here this is the numbers that he did for his first week ever doing junk removal ever this is the first time he's ever done junk removal he's going to profit two thousand six hundred and eleven dollars now that's the number that's over here 
Uh, it is, oh my God, let me get this out of the way. Right here. That's that number right there. Oops. So he has made $2,611. And, and listen, I gave him, I, I grinded him out. I ain't gonna lie to you. I grinded this boy out. I mean, I made him work hard. But it is possible to, with a mentor, to get somebody to work with uh, to, to make this much money. It, it is very possible. And for a week to start up, bro, he knocked it out. And I'll continue to work with Orson. I think he's a hard worker. I think the value that he brings to the business is awesome. Um, and it shows all the jobs that we did. I mean, it shows all the jobs. And I, I think yesterday, uh, he made a little bit more than one, two, three, four, five, five. That's six jobs yesterday. He's a ton of jobs there. But I think as he works with me, he'll notice how I do things and how I establish the, the fact that uh, uh, how to talk to customers. But this is his. This is his. Now, mine's totally different now. If mine was up there, okay, now my sales were a lot more than, than Orson's, but I sold a little over $5,800 this past week. I did about a little over $5,800. I took home about close to four grand of that $5,800, $4,000 is what I took home. Um, now, his expenses are right there. My expenses were a lot lower than his will, his are, but, but I take in expenses such as uh, uh, paying Orson. That was an expense to me. So I added those. And so my expenses, uh, when I say that, I'm saying like uh, uh, fuel, uh, dumping fees. M I didn't have any of that stuff. I really rarely only had that on Monday. But when it comes to expenses, paying him, mine were a lot higher because I was paying Orson. But just as we work together, I, w I want y'all to realize that this is very possible to someone to start a junk removal service. He made $3,292 and expenses were 681. He took in 2,611 bucks this week. His first week ever doing junk removal, by the way. Uh, he has a uh, Frontier truck, a really small truck and a 14 uh, foot trailer. And we loaded it every day. Every day we were loading. But those are the jobs that he did. Those are the jobs that he did with me. There were some times that I would do a job before him. But other than that, those are that's all the work. Now, the two days that I cashed out, the two days that I did make mo the most money was uh, Monday, the day he did not work with me. He did an eviction fridge or something like that. I have no idea. Well, he only made 220 bucks. I have no idea what that is. Uh, he didn't work with me that day. But I want to explain to you that I made $1,500 that day, and the next day, I made a little over $1,200. So those were my two big days, and the rest of the days were like $800, and then, you know, it, it just kept on going, but there was four days out of the six that I made over 1000 bucks, and that was Friday and Saturday. Yeah, Friday and Saturday. So it is very possible to get into this business and make money. And that's what I'm showing you right there, guys. So don't be scared. Don't be backed off. But I will tell you this. The reason we made this money was because he worked with me and I have a lot of jobs. I can share these jobs and I did with him. Okay. So that's what I want to explain that if you're new to this business, get yourself a mentor or something, man. Get you something that, that you could work with. I was working with Carlos uh, on Monday when I did those hot tubs and his truck broke down. So I had to use Orson to help me out. So I was stuck in a very weird predicament on that one. Anyway, I just want to explain that to you guys. Uh, as I work with Orson, you could tell that I'll be, we'll be communicating better and I will be able to talk to our customers a lot better than, we, than we're, we're supposed to. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you all later. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you. Have a good day.